good afternoon everyone thanks atul sir din dial sir and uh, the whole uh, gathering here my name is uh, yogesh mittal and i'm here to discuss about the esg financing uh, on your screens now so uh, with the with the emergence of this topic and uh, the the expansion of its relevance in uh, in our day to day lives esg of course for investors investees and uh, all the different aspects who are involved uh, in uh, these uh, spectrum of things uh, we will discuss about it in uh, in the forthcoming slides now what is esg investing what is it and how is it different from a normal investing see there is nothing much of a difference here ESG as we all know is environment social and governance now if any investment any loan any bond issuance is having a color of these three words it means it is ESG and you have the green bonds and you have the green funds and so many other things so normally you attach green and ESG are synonymous with each other and uh, when we are hearing these words uh, this actually become uh, this actually mean to convey the ESG investing or financing now what is the trend how are the investors looking at esg is it of relevance or it's just a terminology a nomenclature a word having some sort of a fashion and no uh, no real substance behind it well the current trends in india and the global it reflects that investors are increasingly applying the non financial factors of environment social and governance to their investments means if there is an investment if there is a pension fund if there is an institutional investor a retail investor before making investment in any particular company and shares as a part of its analysis while somebody were to look at what is the roi what is the growth potential what is the story behind the company normally in the last couple of years esg whether that investee company is going to be playing a role in esg or not that is something which investors have been taking a note of and making decisions on that basis as a result of it the companies are also making disclosures in the financials increasingly with respect to their esg uh, and initiatives that they've been taking and with all of these developments taking place there is a need of some regulation some consistency to be brought in these disclosure standards how an investor would look at the balance sheet to look at how strong are the company complying with the esg norms or not so there are so many different associations like we have the sustainability accounting standards board sasb the global reporting initiative and recently conduct uh, recently constituted the task force on uh, climate related financial disclosure tcfd there have been different global organizations and uh, along with india they've been working to define the standards and regularize and prescribe it to prescribe the esg norms which as a part of its balance sheet every company will henceforth be disclosing going forward now how does our investing in a esg compliant company help investors is it of any help is it a norm what actually does it mean for a investor you see a esg investing making investment in companies and projects which are esg compliant it enables the investors to to invest as per their preferences now i'm taking the example of cement sector now cement manufacturing is important for economy it is bound to happen and it will happen but it is energy intensive process and if in this process one is let's say using thermal energy and causing some sort of a, a damage to the environment probably the esg funds may not prefer such an activity despite the fact that it is profitable despite the fact that it is needed for the economy but a esg focused fund is not something that is going to uh, ensure and uh, you know prefer investment in such a initiative on the contrary if a company is fulfilling its esg uh, requirements in a better manner obviously it will be preferred by the investors now what do investors consider when they are uh, esg in their investments why do, why do they consider this see first of all it is the regulatory intervention now uh, as a part of gst if somebody is producing thermal energy and uh, you know the clean energy ses 
and uh, these kind of uh, initiatives are being taken on those activities which are causing more damage to the environment and uh, pollution. So regulatory intervention. Uh, innovative strategy. The ESG, the green funds, are the emerging topics and they are synonymous with innovation. So generally as a technology, generally as a business idea, generally as a model, it is sort of innovative as compared to the conventional uh, business uh, uh, you know, norms that we've been seeing. Business ethics, who doesn't want to make investment in organizations which are, uh, you know, uh, uh, mindful not only towards the investors and business but also to the society and environment in which it operates. The consumer preferences, uh, corporate, corporate reputation, so these are all, you know, somebody who is uh, uh, carrying out the ESG compliant activities and earning carbon credits is significantly uh, having a better reputation as compared to anyone else. So all of these factors put together for a normal retail or an institutional investor tends to reduce the investment risk today. So is ESG one of the preferred investment options? Is it appearing to be that? Yes, the research reflects that 85% of the investors considered ESG factors in their investments in 2020 and going forward. So uh, from a perspective of the fund flow and investments, clearly the ESG compliant companies stand far better than others and this is the norm that is going to happen. Now with all this global talk, where does India stand? What is happening in our economy and how does the future look like to all of us? Here's a reflection of some of the key trends which appeared uh, in the last 24 months, around two years. India ESG assets, as compared to the global standards, have been very, very small, I would say. It, it says it is currently negligible, but it has been growing significantly. There is more than five times in two years uh, the jump of ESG compliant assets in India. And uh, uh, globally, if somebody were to look at the investments are uh, to the extent of 35 mil trillion uh, uh, US dollars, and uh, in India, it is uh, quite negligible right now, but it's increasing and growing and it will continue to grow. The important thing, sir, is the last two years, almost all the ESG enabled investment products have been launched in India. So for an Indian investor to search for ESG products, whatever is available globally, it is available for an Indian investor as well. And we clearly are seeing with the numbers of significant amount of trend, which is increasing. Now, with the increasing investor interest in ESG investing, what is it that the regulators and uh, other uh, authorities would do? So SEBI and uh, the market regulators, honorable authorities have been looking into this matter more uh, closely and playing a more proactive role into it. So SEBI right from 2017 has been prescribing, uh, uh, you know, through its circulars and notifications, uh, several uh, uh, several guidelines for uh, enabling uh, ESG investments by uh, the general investors in India. And one can also look at, sir, from 17 onwards till 21. Uh, we can see, I mean, who are generally the investors in uh, ESG. And uh, obviously, in the initial years, uh, we can see that the government and government-backed enterprises were significantly uh, the players in ESG, but the trend has completely changed. It's no longer the government and no longer the financial institution, but rather the private companies who've uh, come out significantly well in uh, the last year or so. And uh, the ESG market in India is currently dominated by the private individuals, uh, private companies, sorry. These are the examples of green bonds. And I want to uh, spend a little time uh, uh, showing how the trend has been. Uh, Ghaziabad Nagar Nigam, sir. So when we, when we just hear about this name, obviously, you know, a, a municipal corporation, that too of Ghaziabad, I don't know what sort of images come in our mind. But he's been a very celebrated issuer of green bonds. And uh, they raised $1.5 billion through a green bonds. And uh, uh, for 10 years, the interest rate is, as compared to others, it's quite high. And understandably, for many reasons, it's 8.1%. But they are going to use this money in sustainable water management. The other company, Yarrow Investment Infrastructure Private Limited, $5.81 billion, around 6.5% for three years, solar energy. JSW, this is the Jindal Steel, 
they are uh, uh, through a singapore exchange they have uh, raised 7.707 uh, million us dollars the interest rate is fantastically 4.1% for 10 years and this is going to be in hydro energy projects renew wind energy this is very much our indian company along with the nine group companies they have raised more than 500 million us dollars 4.5% and for a seven years, India INX, and uh, they are going to be investing in wind and solar energy. State Bank of India, our own SBI, they raised it basically for renewable energy, low carbon buildings, waste management, and other energy intensive commercial transactions. Five years, four and a half percent. Adani Green, and it is customary that you talk about financing and don't discuss Ambani and Adani, so we are discussing that. So Adani Green uh, raised. Uh, 500 million US dollars, 6.25 percent, five years, again through Singapore Exchange and a combination of India INX, they are going to be investing in solar projects. So uh, there has been uh, uh, some initiatives taken by SEBI and our uh, uh, honorable authorities, market regulators from 2017 particularly, and as more companies are join, joining this bandwagon of uh, becoming a players of uh, ESG and it is becoming a buzzword even for the investors as we have seen, uh, clearly, there is uh, more uh, evolution which is going to happen in this uh, phase now. So we've discussed about how the trends have been, how the present situation is, and who all are the players active in this field. Now, how does the future looks like? Now, let me start with a very, very celebrated video which we all can recall. Mr. Modi, he went to Paris and our PM Honorable uh, uh, Mr. Modi, he, he mentioned about uh, India's target to achieve uh, net zero emissions by 2070. Now, this is still 48 years away, but somebody has taken efforts and uh, shown courage at an international scale to uh, give a commitment on behalf of India. So, 2070 is when India and our whole country, our whole economy has to become a net zero emissions. So, clearly, sustainability is no longer an option for the companies. It may be 48 years, maybe the second generation would uh, take the benefits, not people like us. But still, it is a significant uh, step towards in that direction. And uh, if it is not uh, on the priority list and seriousness for the companies, uh, clearly this is uh, going to become a, a issue. So this means that even at an institutional level, at an organization level, the big companies would have to drive their investments in ESG compliant projects. So you'd have more of uh, coal and cement companies going into renewable energy projects, fulfilling their captive requirements through these sustainable water projects and a lot of those projects that we've seen. So clearly that is going to become the norm uh, in, the current, uh, uh, in the next few years. Green and sustainable bonds will clearly hold the key to India's climate resilience. I mean, uh, if, we, if we really penetrate this market and hopefully all of us will make efforts in, in that, I think in the next five to 10 years, the Delhi pollution and the Delhi airs will significantly improve. If we were to make investments again in ESG, have the, electrify, uh, uh, you know, the electric buses running on the Delhi streets and uh, we can cut short the pollution emissions in a significant way going forward so it is not only for you know a big nationwide dream even for a common man to to uh, get associated with esg and uh, get benefits out of there is clearly there within the radar uh, at least a dozen of indian companies have raised money and uh, it is going to i mean show at least a doubling trend for the next few years so if you have a project which uh, is uh, normally a esg compliant that is perhaps going to be uh, you know, better and uh, with more uh, prospects of being taken up by the investors uh, in the next few years. So I think uh, it calls for a larger participation and awareness from all of us and uh, it's a significant achievement. I would like to thanks once again and uh, congratulate uh, Atul sir and the whole team for organizing this and uh, thanks very much for listening. Thank you.